like to welcome you to EMU today, and we're so glad that you're able to join us. Just sit back and relax and enjoy the conversation with our great lineup of guests. And uh, Sarah Potteracki, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm great. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're still coming back for more, huh? Yes, yes. Definitely. Yeah, good experience so far. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very happy to be back here. I'm really enjoying my time on EMU today. Have you heard this campaign called You Are Welcome Here? Yes, actually. I really, really loved seeing the banners and everything going up around campus. We have the person here who's responsible for that campaign. And we're so happy to welcome Mr. Walter Crabb, and he is the Vice President for Communications here at Eastern Michigan. Has over 25 years of experience and uh, really been doing a great job. Walter Crabb, thanks for joining us. Uh, Mark, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. So you've been responsible for the True EMU campaign and now the You Are Welcome Here campaign. Uh, take some time and tell us, please, about You Are Welcome Here. Sure, Mark. Um, and first of all, I will always give credit. There's a team of us that does both of these uh, and does all of our campaigns. So, so it's not by no means one person. But um, You Are Welcome Here was designed, um, and, and I'd love to say that we designed it, I designed it. Um, but actually, credit goes to Temple University. Uh, Temple University, uh, back uh, in late 2016-17, decided that uh, could kind of see what was happening in the international community. That international students, international faculty members, were beginning to view the U United States differently and didn't necessarily consider the U.S. the welcoming place that it has always been. Mm -hmm. And so they were observing that there was a, a, um, a lessening of interest in students wanting to come here to study, to come to the U.S. and study, and they came up with this campaign called You Are Welcome Here. And the whole idea was to, to encourage international students that the United States still is a friendly place, still is a welcoming place. Our universities are bastions of supporting the international community. And, uh, and we found out about that campaign and decided that we should participate and we we're one of maybe the first 50, 75 universities around the country to participate. Mm. Now there's more than 300 universities uh, participating in the campaign. Wow. And now, what were the steps to creating this campaign on Eastern's campus? Sure. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of steps. Uh, I think uh, one of the first things we did was, um, was looking at what was happening elsewhere and what was happening at other universities. And what many universities were doing was creating a video. And the video was sort of their, their flag in the sand saying, this is what we stand for in supporting the international community and supporting our international students. So we decided our first piece needed to be a video as well. And we actually have that video and we'd like to, uh, we'd like to show it if we can. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could, you brought the video with you, I think it's You Are Welcome. Uh, any other introductions you'd like to do for the video? No, I think, uh, I think the video will speak, speak to itself and then we can talk more about it. You got it, absolutely. You are welcome here. 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 You are welcome You are welcome here. You are welcome You are welcome here. 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 Hello, I'm Jim Smith, President, Eastern Michigan University. On behalf of all of us at Eastern, you are welcome here. You're welcome here.
That is that is quite impressive. And uh, there are some other components of the campaign that you want to talk about as well. Sure, sure, uh, Mark. Um, happy to because um, really this was our first step to create that video. And what we did to do that is is we basically put out a, a casting call, if you want mm -hmm. to call it that, um, sent a note around to our international students through our international office, and then also through our social media channels and encouraged students, international students, non-international students to come out and, and participate in that video shoot that you saw that was part of that video. So that was kind of the, the beginning stage. Um, and, then, and then kind of in, in conjunction with that, we had a separate room going the same time we were shooting the video where we were doing photographs of the same students. So the students came in and other students and, um, and we were doing photographs in one room, doing video in another room, and the photographs ended up being used in our banner campaign. Mm. And so the light post banners that you see mm -hmm. around campus, mm -hmm. um, there's 108 students featured in these light post banners, 108 different international students, and you're looking at one now, and a uh, wonderful young woman from Ghana who came in and participated in our, our video shoot, in our photo shoot. And, and um, we ended up taking 108 individual different students and putting them on 108 different light post banners around campus. So a great way to um, encourage our international community to let them know that they're welcome in our community, they're welcome here at Eastern Michigan mm -hmm. University. We asked them to come in wearing, if they wanted to, their ethnic clothing if they wanted to. Um, in the case of the video, you saw that some of the students spoke in their native mm -hmm. language. We encouraged encourage them to say you are welcome here in their native language. So it's really a way to embrace this entire international community. And, 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 then, you, and then you did something with the garage of the Detroit Tigers as well. Yes, we did, we did. So we took all of those 108 students that we shot individually and we decided that we have a great place in the center of our campus on our parking garage and we put together an 80 foot by 23 foot banner. So it's all on the, it's on the side of the parking garage where all 108 students are featured. So you see each one of the students in the, in the campaign and you're looking at them now. And uh, all 108 students in their various attire with their flags representing their home nation. And you can see that uh, in the parking garage in the center of campus. And then beyond that, um, one of the most popular t-shirts we've ever created, we did a, we did a block E you are welcome here t-shirt. And within the block E is you are welcome here in a lot of different languages. And here you see a photograph of some Asian students at, uh, at uh, EMU night at Comerica Park with President and Dr. Connie Rule Smith, President Smith, um, and uh, wearing those t-shirts. We've, we've produced more than 1,000 of those t-shirts. We can't keep them in stock. They're the most popular t-shirts we've ever created. And, and, excuse me, and I know that you have another campaign, you are welcome in Ypsilanti. Can we take a look at that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Ypsilanti became aware of our campaign and asked us how can we participate in this because we recognize not only Eastern as a welcoming community, but the Ypsilanti community and the surrounding area is welcoming to international students in our international community as well. So I will, if we could show that video, that would be right. Okay, let's take a look. Welcome to Ypsilanti. Here you'll meet the talented, the fascinating, the proud. Students with the arena to question. Artists with the room to create. Entrepreneurs with the freedom to risk. History buffs with the opportunity to explore. Here we value authentic conversation over created facade. We value passion over promotion and we value uniqueness over the expected. Ypsilanti, we are unfiltered. We are authentic. We are real. Ipsy real. True EMU, you are welcome here.
That was a really interesting video. Yeah, thank you. I remember seeing the reactions, especially on social media. It seemed like the, the banners went up pretty much overnight in, in my own uh, perception of it, and it was just everyone was very happy with what they were seeing. Yeah, we, uh, and we're glad about that because what we found is our international students were actually shooting, taking photographs of themselves and tweeting it out on their own to their international <laughs> communities back home which is part of the reason it helps us recruit new international students. So the final video I was going to show you is we did want to thank our international students for, for their work on this project with us and let them know how much we support them. And President Smith wanted to put together an ice cream social to thank the students for their participation. And uh, it was a wonderful video that uh, also uh, was very well received. Can we take a look? Absolutely. Let's do it. This afternoon, we uh, just had a great event here at Eastern Michigan University at the Lake House, uh, right by the water and by the fountains. Uh, we celebrated our banner campaign, You Are Welcome Here. About 65 students were with us, international students, and we did We Are Welcome Here, and uh, I think the students had a lot of fun. The excitement we have for Eastern Michigan University, again, part of our overall campaign to welcome people to campus, but with a special twist today, our international students who come to us from really every continent around. Many people have seen the uh, statistics at Eastern. We have about a thousand international students. Our goal is to double that. We want to be at 2,000. We want the students who are here today to help us. So we took lots of video. We took lots of still pictures. Uh, we're sending them around the globe to have students help us recruit new students to come here to Eastern and to meet our goal of going from 1,000 international students to 2,000. Walter, I want to thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good stuff. Yeah, it's great. Great, Excellent. Mark. And I really appreciate Sarah and Mark you inviting me here to talk about this great campaign. Thank you. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you a brief video about what's happening at the School of Engineering. We'll be right back. Good evening, everyone. I'm Derrica Bennett reporting to you as the field reporter for EMU Today. And today we're standing right in front of the College of Technology located in Seal Hall. Today we'll be talking to the dean of the college about the new program here that was approved by the Board of Regents just a couple weeks ago. The new program is electrical and computer engineering. So stay tuned. Uh, I am uh, Mohamed Katu. I am uh, the dean of the College of Technology. I uh, really appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity to talk to you and to tell you about the programs we have, in particular this, uh, this new program that we have in uh, electrical and computer engineering. Uh, this is um, our newest program to be added to the portfolio of the College of Technology. But the electrical com and computer engineering program is built in a similar way to, uh, to the mechanical engineering program, which is really more uh, of a response to the industrial needs and community needs uh, to, uh, to, you know, to have these programs available to them here on the Eastern Michigan University's campus. But we built the program to, uh, to be able to have uh, the American Board uh, or the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, ABID, uh, accredit the program so it meets all the criteria uh, for that possible future accreditation. But in addition to that, we wanted the students to uh, pass uh, a Fundamentals of Engineering exam upon graduation. Uh, so the program contains all the necessary knowledge uh, to at least advance in those two areas. The total required credit hours for the student to graduate is the same as any Bachelor of Science on this campus, 124 credit hours, uh, which will help students to graduate in a timely fashion. Uh, we're certainly trying to enable them to graduate in four years, provided that they come here uh, with uh, necessary math and English skills to proceed and to advance. There are actually quite few uh, companies uh, that we are partnering with Big automotive companies like uh, General Motors, uh, Ford Motor Company, uh, Chrysler Corporation, Fiat Chrysler, I should say. There are also some other companies represented there that include uh, companies like Tinico, American Axle, uh, and that will help uh, the you know create or bring the opportunities to campus for our students 
both as uh, internships and as full employment. So we're actually reaching out to existing entities here, the existing students here, and uh, as well as community colleges in the area. But on top of that, I mean, I've been, uh, we've been doing, doing some international recruiting. As of now, uh, we are offering the Bachelor of Science in uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering, and we're offering the other Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are actually talking as faculty and uh, as administrators in the College of Technology about the possibility of offering uh, a master's uh, of science and engineering. And in fact, actually, I've, I've heard some faculty talk about, about the possibility of offering a PhD at mm -hmm. one point. Uh, but definitely a master of science and engineering is within reach and, uh, and uh, within the next three to five years, I think we will be seeing a master of science and engineering. And again, I'm Derek Bennett reporting to you as the field reporter for EMU today. Thank you, Derek and Bennett, for giving us that great story about the College of Technology. Some great things are happening over there. So we're going to continue the conversation on EMU today with Dr. Corey Emo, and he's the professor of chemistry at the College at the College of Arts and Sciences. Correct? Yes. Thank yes. You. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Us. Thanks for having me, sir. Yeah, and, it's and, great. and just kind of give us a very brief overview of you. How long have you been with the college with Eastern Michigan University? So, then we'll get specifically to your program. Yep. Uh, I came to Eastern Michigan in 2005, so I've been here about 12 years and change now. Um, I came to teach organic chemistry, and I've, I've been a part of developing this new fermentation science program that we have as well. So that's, that's been taking up a lot of my time in the last couple of years. So people yeah. are saying a new fermentation science program. That sounds, yes. whoa, <laughs> exactly what is that? Right, so what fermentation is, is when we hear about that, we think about the process of making beer, making wine, making cheese, these sorts of things. And so fermentation is really the scientific process. It's, it's organisms taking sugars from their environment, making energy from that, and then they spit out all these waste products that they don't need. Well, those waste products, those are the things that make um, beer and wine alcoholic. They're the things that make cheese and sauerkraut sour. So we really like those byproducts. You know, we like to take those waste products from the organisms. So fermentation science is us taking the relevant chemistry and biology, putting it in the context of how to control these processes to make better beer, wine, cheese, sauerkraut, these mm -hmm. sorts of things. So I know that you started working on creating this program about four years ago now? Yep, yep. We, uh, <clears throat> so a colleague of mine in the chemistry department, Greg Wilmes, uh, we sort of came up with this idea about four or five years ago to uh, develop, a, really we just started with a class. We wanted to develop a class about the science of food. And we started to look at what was happening with the growth in craft brewing industry and really sort of the, the foodie culture that we have now and the interest in local eating. And fermentation is a big part of that. And mm -hmm. as those industries are growing, um, those industries need um, trained employees, skilled employees that know, know the science. So we realized there was really a program here. We, uh, we talked to our dean in the College of Arts and Sciences. They paid for us to go to Denver to the Craft Brewers Conference. We thought this was, <laughs> this was a great <laughs> trick to pull off. <laughs> but, um, we never got that invitation, by the way. Right. <laughs> you have to apply, okay. it turns out. Um, so we, we talked to a ton of people in the industry there. We got a feeling for the types of skills that they wanted to see in their employees going forward. And that's really where we started to build the program, was that's from those wondering. conversations. How, how many students are in the program? Um, right now, we're in the low double digits in terms of declared majors and minors. We're in our second year mm -hmm. right now, so we're happy with that. Um, we're getting 50 to 75 students a year coming through our intro and our advanced courses. You don't have to be um, a declared major or minor to take those courses either. And, and so obviously, we're in metropolitan Detroit in mm -hmm. southeastern Michigan. Yes. 
and we have quite a few alums in Detroit, the metropolitan areas, as well as across the state of Michigan. But you've also, Eastern Michigan has a connection to the city of Detroit in Midtown with this program. Talk to us yes. about that. Yeah, so this is, this is a new venture that will be starting up in 2019, we expect, um, in Detroit. We're, we're partnering with Northern United Brewing Company. So this is uh, North Peak Brewing, Jolly Pumpkin Brewing. Um, and some other businesses. And they're opening up a new, a new brew pub in Midtown Detroit. And they want this brew pub to be a teaching brewery, essentially. And so um, we are getting brought into this to help uh, provide some of the educational aspects of this, this short brewing program. This is complementary to the sorts of courses and major that we're offering on campus. This is a, a non-degree program. It's meant to be a very short sort of 14, 15 week program. Mm -hmm. And we're really taking advantage of the fact that we're going to be located in Midtown Detroit um, because the, to be honest, the brewing industry is very overrepresented by white males, people that look like me. Mm -hmm. um, and one real focus of this, um, this teaching brewery in Midtown is going to be to try to reach out to, to groups that are underrepresented. Get a little bit more diversity as part of the program yes. as well. Get more exposure Absolutely. to those individuals outstanding. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. I know some people may have like a skewed perception of this as being just a beer making major right. or beer making program. Right. What kinds of skill sets are students within the program developing and where can they see this taking them in their careers? Right. It's, it's true. This is not a program that is all about beer. Um, it's a lot about beer, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, but we, we definitely uh, try to make sure that that's not the focus. Um, the the skill sets that you get from going through the program is you'll really come out of this being a scientist. I mean, there's an enormous amount of chemistry and biology courses that are, that are wrapped into the program and that the fermentation-specific adv courses um, take advantage of to put that science into context. So a graduate of this program, you know, if they get to the end, they decide, well, you know, the, a job in a winery is not for me. A, a job in a, in a cheese making factory, a yogurt factory is, you know, I don't want to work quality control there. Um, you know, they've got a science degree. They can go work for a pharmaceutical company. They can go work for a biofuels company. And they'll be able to put those fermentation skills um, to use in those areas too. That's outstanding. So, so yeah. my understanding, if I, and preparing for yeah. this discussion with you. Uh, Eastern Michigan is the only university in the state doing this, and one of a few of handful universities around the country, is that right? Right, so in, in terms of a four-year degree at one place, um, this is the only place in Michigan right now. When we started, um, we were somewhere around maybe the fourth or fifth program in the country to have a fermentation science program. I'm not quite sure what the count is right now, but you know, it's no more than 10 at this point, certainly, around the country. Do you expect other universities to take note and really start to get it? I mean, we think of I, other states, for right. example, is Colorado. Right. You know, Colorado right. is very well known for, you know, different beers, craft beers, and whatever Absolutely. Do you find other states or universities trying to take Eastern Michigan's lead? Yeah, um, and and in fact, Colorado is one, one of those states that does have a program, in mm -hmm. fact. Um, but, but you know, we're, we're really hoping that we're out and we're out on the edge and we can be a leader in, in this space. It's, it makes it kind of interesting trying to design the courses for these programs because we, you know, we don't have the model necessarily because we're, we're one of the leaders in this type mm -hmm. of program as it is. Now we're seeing this expansion with this new partnership. Mm -hmm. is there, are there any current uh, long-term goals on the table for this program? Sure. Um, you know, the, uh, the partnership in Detroit is something that we're really going to put a lot of effort towards. Um, but the, one of our biggest goals is just integrating into the local fermentation community, business community as it is. Um, we're, we're, we've developed strong relationships with the brinery, uh, a vegetable fermenting company in, in Ann Arbor. They actually made a, a hot sauce in collaboration with us for some homecoming events that we did last year. Um, <coughs> we've, we're working with a lot of the local breweries, so Arbor Brewing Company, Ipsy Ale House. Um, we've got two students out there that have either uh, already gotten hired or have gotten an internship wow. um, from their connections with this program. 
So a lot of what we really want to be doing in the near future, strengthening those relationships, building new ones, and being able to get our students out there into the workplace as well. I think, as a student here at EMU, I think yeah. you will probably go to this program, yeah. huh? I might become a hit pretty quick. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> I, I would like to see it grow a bit more, because as a, as a film student, an entertainment student, and a marketing student, I haven't really ventured into the sciences. Hmm. Which brings me to another question. Is there some sort of like introductory course that someone like myself who can't pursue it as a major yeah. or a minor but is still interested, is there something I could take? Absolutely. So, Intro to Fermentation Science, Firm 101, is our introductory course. It's open to everybody. There are no science prereqs. Um, so, we, we get you everything you need to get your feet under you within that course. Um, we do give, we've got a wide range of students taking that course, everything from biochemistry majors to construction management majors, that course. So, it's a little challenging to teach sometimes to get mm -hmm. the science right. Um, but that's a great place to start. Uh, by this time next year, we'll have a lab going with that, so it'll be uh, Gen Ed approved as well. Wow. You, know, you know what I love about this? This continues yep. to show EMU's innovation, mm -hmm. diversity when it comes yep. to offering programs, classes, right. and you're trying to extend this to different segments of the population. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going to continue to take for us to continue right. to grow and attract additional students into He's doing yep. growing programs such right. as this, fermentation yep. program. Yeah, that's, that's one of the exciting parts about this program for certain. Yeah, yeah. anything in our, in our closing seconds that uh, other uh, 15 seconds or so mm. with you, high level goal for <laughs> this year in 2018? Well, for, uh, part of it's getting through this year. We're teaching, we're teaching new courses this year. We've got new students coming into the program, so it's, it's getting them as well prepared as we can and moving on to the next step. How can more people get information about this? A website? We've got a, uh, we've got a Facebook page. We've got Instagram. Facebook will get you to our website. It's a long address, so it, <laughs> that's, that's the best way to find the link. Dr. Corey Evo, we yep. thank you, Professor of Chemistry from the College of Arts and Sciences. We yep. wish you much continued success. Thank you for having me. Sarah, thank you again as well. Thank you. And to our listeners, to our uh, viewers, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of EMU Today, and we will see you next time. Go out and make it a great day, make it a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.